receiving to start the game. Mike Hollis ready to kick it off for Jacksonville. There is Mike, a first year player. And they're very good return people. This is David Dunn, number 80, who's back deep. He's a rookie from Fresno State, a big wide receiver who can really go. Not sold out as it's been so much in the recent years here at Riverfront Stadium, but a very enthusiastic crowd. The Bengals hoping for the turnaround season after a 3 and 13 year a season ago. Temperature in the 70s, clear and sunny, perfect playing conditions. As Hollis hits the ball, a line drive. It'll come in on the hop, and it is picked up by Eric Bieniemy, who comes across the 20, breaks it across the 30, and the 40. And Eric Bieniemy from Colorado rips it all the way out to the 49-yard line, where he is taken down on the play by Darren Carrington. A 35-yard return, Beasley. If we look at the Budweiser offensive lineup for the Cincinnati Bengals, because there's a longtime veteran at right guard, a key player. Kevin Sargent has the tough job of trying to block Jeff Lagerman, who had such a great game last week for Jacksonville at defensive end. Blake at quarterback, Cothran the blocking fullback, Harold Green very productive last week, and he gets the first carry. Jaguars string it out and make the knockdown after a gain of about two yards on the play. Calvin Pritchett was the tackler. The front four for Jacksonville Smengi, Pritchett, Davey, and Lagerman, who had a Pro Bowl type of game last week. Williams and on the left side had 11 tackles. He was terrific. All three linebackers tackled well. Vinnie Clark had a big game at corner. And you see the alignment on the nickel defense as Thomas comes in. Right now it is second down. They need a long six, and now the pass in the flat goes to Harold Green. Looks like it came in low. It's incomplete. And that'll bring up third down and about seven yards to go for the first down. For Jeff Blake, this is an opportunity to uh, once again show that he be, can be a consistent performer throughout this football game. The thing that you will love about Jeff Blake is his ability to avoid the rush and the ability to make the big spectacular play. The Bengals, even though they won last week, were 0 for 9 on third downs. They go to the run this time, and Harold Green takes it, and he doesn't get there. Let's see where the forward progress is started. He needed to get down to the... 41 yard line of Jacksonville. Monty Grow, a backup safety, came up and made the hit. It's going to be close, and maybe close enough easily to measure. Well, we're seeing power running by the Cincinnati Bengals right now. They're pulling a lot of people. They seem to be uh, the first couple of running plays concentrating on running toward Jeff Lagerman, which is a surprise. Probably more so because of the. Well, it looks like they got the first down, so a great start by Cincinnati. And one matchup to watch will be Lagerman taking on number 77, Kevin Sargent, the offensive uh, left tackle for the Cincinnati Bengals. That should be a mismatch that should favor Jacksonville. Lagerman, a tremendous game last week in the opening loss to Houston. That's the first third down the Bengals have converted this season. As we mentioned, they were 0 for 9 last week. Blake throws over the middle, gets his man. And out of the backfield is the fullback, Jeff Cothran from Ohio State. He's inside the Jaguars' 35-yard line, knocked down by Mark Williams. He's to the game. Bengals want to control the ball and obviously improve on third-down conversions and eliminate turnovers. Both coaches yesterday talking about eliminating mistakes. They have to do it to win. Jaguars, their coaches and their players in the opposition all says the personnel's in place to win some games this year. But the mistakes have to go to do it. Second down and just over a yard, and Jeff Blake has to burn a timeout very early in the game. Short timeout. So the Bengals driving as we open the game. No score, and you are watching the NFL on NBC. That is the multi-million dollar left leg of Kaijana Carter, the number one draft choice in the NFL by the Bengals, who went out in the preseason on just his third carry with a torn ACL. It's been a tough year for first-round picks. Boselli, the great offensive tackle from Southern California, the Jaguars number one. He's out with a knee, but making very good progress. He'll be back probably in a couple of weeks. Stokes and Wheatley, two other number ones. 
out right now. Joe Walters, the right tackle, has come back from two ACL injuries. For the Bengals, as now they go to the enemy, he turns the corner in good defense. Vinny Clark, left corner, who had a big game last week, comes up and makes the stop short of the first down. So the tendency right now we're seeing in the Cincinnati offense is to run power sweeps to the left. They are pulling uh, number 72, Scott Brumfield, Kevin Sargent working on Jeff Lagerman. That time, the Jaguars did a pretty good job of getting outside. But a penalty marker down, Gordon McCarter, our referee. It's interesting, Beasley, last week the Bengals were running power sweeps to the right. Basically, you look up, you look at matchups, and that's why I'm so surprised they're going left because Lagerman versus First Sergeant. Down, illegal track back, number 86 offense. 15 yards, repeat second down. Expensive penalty, wide receiver Darnay Scott of the Bengals cracking back, blocking below the waist. Well, the crack back is legal, but you have to keep it above the waist. Darnay Scott's a very exciting receiver. Comes down the line this time and goes below the waist on the block. And they talked about eliminating mistakes. Here is a major early mistake by the Bengals. Instead of second and one, they now go to second down and 16. See, those are drive killers. Those are drive killers, those type of mistakes, especially early in a football game. You want to settle down and play mistake-free if you can. Jeff Blake at quarterback, one of the things they talk about, one of his great attributes is he's good for this team because he doesn't need a lot of time to get the ball away. He's so elusive when he drops back. You know, he's got so much agility and mobility that he makes a, you know, a, a little bit average, a little bit better than average offensive line here in Cincinnati, a pretty good offensive line. Very hard to sack, and he's also very quick on his feet. He, his five-step drop, he is back there in a split second. His drops are very fast. He's in position to throw early. And he might be doing it now. Here comes the rush. He dumps it out in the flat. He gets his man, Troy Sadowski, a backup tight end. Takes it down to the 35-yard line, taken down by Harry Cole in the strong safety for the Jaguars, but there's a good gain on the play. Still short of a first down. Sadowski taking a little bit of a pop that time. He's a little banged up on the play, but this is the type of play that the Cincinnati Bengals would like to see Jeff Blake orchestrate very well. Sharp passing, high completion percentage. Third down and five arises. Blake stands in, makes the throw, and he has a drop. A perfectly thrown ball. Darnay Scott had his hands on it, so Darnay not off to a fast start with the illegal block that was a 15-yard penalty, and now a drop of what would have been a first down. The Jacksonville Jaguars proved to be a very difficult team to run on last week. They had one bad series, the first series. So Cincinnati choosing to go with sharp passing and sweeps to the outside so far. Bengals the line on fourth down. They need five. Carl Pickens out wide to the top of your screen, and they go to the run. And here is Harold Green working hard. He takes it down close to the 31-yard line. Again, it's going to be very close to a first down. So what would seem to be a passing down, Beasley, they run it right up the middle, and they are very close to a first down. And they've, they've done this twice. This is reach blocking. You see a, a little fallback block by Joe Walter, number 63. And Harold Green is a very hard runner, off to a great start from last week. He played very well last week. So very interesting that twice in short yardage situations that, that uh, were a little bit too long to be punching it in there, the Bengals decide to run it. Again, the mark goes for Dave Shula and his Bengals as they get a second first down now. And this was on a fourth down try. The right guard, the veteran right guard for the Bengals, Bruce Kazerski, who talking yesterday, said, when you look at the Jaguars, everybody talks about expansion team. He said it might be a new football team, but these guys, for the most part, are all established NFL players who've been around four or five years for the most part. And he really liked the look of their personnel on film. He thought their defense was terrific last week, and the stats showed that. They graded out number six. Blake somehow eludes the rush. And gets inside the 30-yard line on an absolutely sensational play by the quarterback who was lost behind the line of scrimmage and found his way out. Well, there was very little protection for Jeff Blake that time. That is what he does 
so well. You can see it's almost a jailbreak. I mean, all the defensive linemen, Pritchard and company, everybody putting pressure. But look how Blake eludes the rush and makes a positive out of what would have been a negative for 80% of the quarterbacks in this league. James Williams, an outside linebacker, cut him down, so there was actually a gain of three yards on the play. It was almost a 10-yard loss. Big defensive hit. Coming up the middle on Harold Green was Joel Smengi, the left end, number 99. And he makes the hit in the backfield, and it's third and long. Smengi quickly inside Joe Walter that time. He did not touch him. That type of penetration will kill any offensive play. Extended opening drive. This is the tenth play of this drive. You see uh, Joel Smengi coming in as an unrestricted free agent from the New Orleans Saints. Third down and ten with the ball is position. Opening drive, no score. Blake steps in, makes the throw. Darnay Scott takes it inside the 25-yard line, and that'll bring up fourth down and a field goal try. Vinnie Clark makes the stop short of the first down. And here we go. This is just straight protection and a very a absolute bullet to Darnay Scott. Good running at the end of it, but, you know, once again, Cincinnati wanted to control the time of possession. It's one of the keys we showed you, and they're off to a good start. Darnay Scott, a second-year player, had a sensational first year, averaging 19 yards a catch and 46 catches. Here's Pelfrey, who's been so excellent as a place kicker. His try on the way. He hooks it up and through. And the Bengals, on Pelfrey's right foot, take a 3 nothing lead. The same man who ended the game last week with a victory at Indianapolis hits the first points. The NFL on NBC continues after this. A good day to cruise the Ohio River here in southern Ohio. And a good day for football at Riverfront in Cincinnati as the Bengals' Doug Pelfrey, who just hit a 42-yard field goal, kicks off. And Willie Jackson runs it back for the Jaguars. Cut down hard at the 22-yard line. Coming down to make that hit was Jeff Hill, number 84, a wide receiver for the Bengals. As we look at the offensive line of Jacksonville, Wydell at center has been solid. DeMarco, the rookie from Michigan State, starting at right tackle, and soon they'll have a rookie in Boselli starting at left tackle. Burline at quarterback, Lachey Maston, the fullback, and Randy Jordan, a man who calls this his Super Bowl, gets the start at running back. He's the lone setback. They have a wing set to the left. A power run could go that way. And Jordan cuts it back and takes it hard straight ahead out to the about the 28-yard line where Ricardo McDonald, number 56, makes the stop. Look at the defensive front. John Copeland was the number five draft choice in the whole NFL three years ago. Keith Rucker, left tackle, weighs 360. He had a good game against the Colts. Tovar, playing with a broken hand, had a tremendous game at middle linebacker. Gracie Walker, who's one of Jordan's best friends from North Carolina, where they both played. At two interceptions at safety last week for the Bengals. Second and five. Burline gets some time, makes the throw, and it's off the hands of an open Pete Mitchell. The normally sure-handed tight end who played for Tom Coughlin at Boston College. See, that goes in the mistake category. That's one that should have been caught. So we'll put that one down as one mistake. Mistake being the, one of the keys for this game. And you could take a look at it. Burline put it right there. Read the defense, delivered the ball, and the ball is dropped. Burline sets up. Third down and five for the Jaguars. Open is Jordan. First down and more as Jordan is on the run, and he could go the distance. So Randy Jordan, who calls this his Super Bowl, is in the end zone with the first touchdown of the season, the first touchdown ever for Jacksonville. 71 yards. You talk about a blown coverage. There was nobody over there. No one was there. Jordan was there and actually had a blocker. That was unbelievable. And for the running back position to be in a mess for Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. Take a look at what a running back does. Coughlin's not talking about the touchdown to Mitchell. He's talking about the drop pass. 
Now Mike Hollis on the field for the Jaguars for the point after try, which is on the way, and it just angles through. It's good. So a big play, the biggest in the history of the franchise, the 70-plus scoring yard play. Randy Jordan, all alone, turns the corner up the field, gets a block, and it's out of here. Can you believe this? Nobody's there. Run, Jordan, run. All the way to the end zone. We'll be back with the Jaguars' kickoff in a moment. A 71-yard touchdown pass play. Out of the backfield, Randy Jordan gets it. Young man who was cut by the Raiders on the last cut a year ago, sat out of football, and gets his first start in the NFL and makes with the greatest play of this young franchise's history as Hollis kicks off for Jacksonville. A high spinner to rookie David Dunn. 15, 20, he's got room. And Dunn breaks it all the way out to the 40-yard line. So the special teams coverage of the Jaguars on these kickoffs has not been good. The enemy ripped one off almost to midfield to open the game. Dave Shula can't be happy with his team giving up another score on first possession of the opposition. And that, it's a continuing problem for yes, this team. That's been a real problem. 16 of 18 games uh, dating back for this team. They've allowed the opposition to score on the first or second possession. It's something they wanted to work on, and they haven't got it straightened out yet. Both teams scoring on their opening possessions. The Bengals with a field goal, the Jaguars with a touchdown. Harold Green running hard and getting hit hard as he is knocked down at the 44-yard line. Doganius on the tackle. While we have a moment, let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Greg? All right, Don, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Lynn Elliott in overtime from 23 yards out gives the Kansas City Chiefs a 20 to 17 win. The Giants blow a 17 3 lead in this game. The 2 0 Chiefs now face the 2 0 Raiders next week. Let's go back to Don and Beasley. Wow, a tough start for the Giants who are projecting an 11 win season. That is a horrible start, especially the way they started last week. You see, number 51, the linebacker Mark Williams is down and being attended to. Let's see if we can find him somewhere in that fray. Looks like his own man. He butts heads with his own teammate. Number 24, Harry Colon, hits him in the head. It seems to be happening more and more. These guys rocketing at the man with the ball end up crashing into each other. Williams had a terrific game. He's out of Ohio State. From Columbus, not too far to the north. Their linebackers were very solid. Their whole defense played good football last week. As Tom Coughlin can't afford to lose too many. He does not have a lot of depth on this expansion team. He said to us yesterday, the outcome of this game from a Jacksonville standpoint really will depend on our ability to throw the ball. And although it was almost all Jordan running it, it was a touchdown pass from Burline, the start of the game, the scoring. Jacksonville has got to be very happy. I mean, they're happy, number one, that Mark Williams gets up and walks off the field. But number two, the things that they talked about in our meeting before this game, it's coming true. Early success. Get the passing game going with their uh, running situation, a question mark. Maybe we can remove that question mark now with uh, Randy getting off to such a great start on a great play. But they wanted the pass, and they will also show multiple formations. We'll keep track of that for you. Jacksonville uh, averaging 26 yards of play early in this game, Beasley. <laughs> Haven't had many plays, but that 71-yarder will do that. Blake dropping it. Handing off, and it's Harold Green not getting much. Jacksonville very tough to run on. That was a blitz that time by Harry Cola, number 24. He missed the runner in the hole. But the rest of the Jacksonville defense, which once again put on quite a show in the game, in the loss to Houston last week, uh, comes up with a big play and creates another third down situation. The most important down in football, third down. And one that troubled the Bengals a week ago, even though they won, they were 0 for 9, but they did much better so far today. Now it'll be Blake throwing. The rush will be on him, but he's so quick, it's hard to get him. He stands in. Not quick enough this time, and they get Jeff Blake back inside the 40. Corey Mayfield, number 98 of the Jaguars, was the first man through. He's a hard guy to hem in, Jeff Blake, but they did it. Well, take a look at the defensive line play. You see Smidgey from the outside, Pritchard rolling back inside, but the real pressure 
is where number 98 Corey Mayfield comes off the block of Kozerski and company to make the knockdown. And Lee Johnson, who didn't practice all week, had a hamstring strain, will punt the ball for the Bengals. One of the best, he hits it high into a swirling wind. And Jacksonville gets the run back all the way out to the 32-yard line. Desmond Howard makes the return. Desmond Howard was one shoestring tackle away from going the distance. That was very close to being a big play. Henley Marker is down on the field. Holding during the kick, number 41 receiving team, half the distance punt lead from the spot where possession change, first down. So the foul against the Bengals on the return will set them back inside their 10 yard line, back to the nine. Took a lot of scouting and a lot of film review uh, looking at the Cincinnati defense to find that glaring weakness in covering a back out of the backfield that freed up Jordan for the touchdown. Might need some big plays to get out of their own end now. Randy Jordan is cut down by big John Copeland from Alabama, number 92. Larry Pecatello, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals, raving about big John yesterday when we talked to him. He's at the top of your screen, number 92. Look how he comes across, then flattens down the line of scrimmage. They love the way he is playing. And look at him. He's happy with that play. Super play, John Copeland, former number one. A high number one, the fifth pick overall when he came out of Alabama three years ago. Herline on second and ten. Fires downfield and it's almost intercepted. Woo! Dangerous throw. <laughs> there was three defenders around Desmond Howard and Gracie Walker who had two interceptions last week almost had one here. Well here's a good look at it. Pretty good protection up front. Berline has a lot of room to step forward and really tries to throw it in between three guys. Desmond with very little opportunity to catch that one. Bengal linemen exhorting the crowd to pick up the noise, and they do. Berline sets in the shotgun inside his five-yard line. Jacksonville leads first quarter 7-3. Erline takes a look, makes the throw, and Pete Mitchell makes the catch out to the 20-yard line, and he has a first down for Jacksonville. Mitchell, who had a drop on the first ball throw to him, makes the catch and then takes a big strike and holds on. Man-for-man -man coverage. Berline recognizes it right away, sees his tight end break free. Walker comes up and makes the hit, but a little bit too late. Here's the pressure coming at him. You see Ricardo and company coming in around his feet, but a little too late. So a big play for the Jaguars, and they get the ball out to their 20. On first down, they go to the run. Randy Jordan, both hands on the ball, gets ahead for just a yard. He was upended by defensive tackle Artie Smith, number 70 for the Bengals. And Don, this is a run-stopping defensive line extraordinaire. I mean, Big Daddy is 313 after losing some weight. Artie Smith is huge. Keith Rucker might be the biggest defensive lineman in the National Football League. He's beyond huge. <laughs> and John Copeland is a big man. So these guys can stop the run, no question. Now Berline with a second and long play, second and nine. Almost 10. Giving him some time, he airs it out. He has a receiver running to the ball and almost getting to it was the fleet Ernest Gibbons. So Berline, well protected by his offensive blockers, got time to release it long and almost made the big connection. Well, that's one that Steve would like to have again. It's a good throw, but just a little bit too long. You can see that Ernest has about a step and a half on the defender. That's an opportunity loss. Roger Jones is starting in place of the injured Mike Brim, number 24, and he was behind his man by almost two steps. 
Almost another big play. The Jaguars do have a 71 yard touchdown play early. They lead the game 7 to 3. Burline fires and an out pattern incomplete to Willie Jackson. So that brings up fourth down and the Jaguars will punt for the first time in the game. Leonard Wheeler covering. Here's a real good look at it at the top. It's a good pattern. Nice breakout. Very good coverage by Wheeler. Now Wheeler is the is a free safety who's playing corner. So that was an opportunity. You got a free safety playing corner, but that free safety number 37, Leonard Wheeler, did a real good job. Brian Barker, a real solid punter, had a big opening day kicking the ball. He's kicking to a dangerous man, Carl Perkins of the Bengals. Short punt. It takes a Jaguar roll and comes inside the 35 and down to the 30-yard line. Maybe to the 29. So the Jaguars got a good roll, and the Bengals trailing 7-3 go on offense as the NFL and NBC continues. Cincinnati with the ball. The ball is now. There's Troy Sadowski, a tight end, going off with a injury to his shoulder after he made a catch. The ball is spotted to the 43-yard line. It's ruled that one of the Jaguars touched the ball while it was rolling. So it was a 50-yard punt originally marked. Is now a 36-yard punt. Harold Green doesn't find a thing in the middle of the Jacksonville defense. Ernie Logan, 93, was there to get it. You know, it's not a hot day, but I was down on the field, and it's a lot warmer on the field. And the Jacksonville Jaguars are doing a great job rotating the defensive linemen. As you said, uh, Ernie Logan in that time for Joel Sminty. Ernie stepped across, flattened down, and made a good play. 3.50 to play in the first quarter. Jacksonville and White leading 7-3. On second down, Jeff Blake stands in, dumps it off. This is Harold Green. Defenders there to upend him. A terrific defensive play by Ashley Shepard. An outside linebacker, 96. Gain on the play of three. It'll be third and five. That's a good open field tackle against a good runner. Anytime you got a guy that big, Ashley Shepard, all alone, one-on-one, -on -one, that's a dangerous situation. But uh, this is a real good tackle. Watch the end of this. Harold tries to jump inside, but Ashley with the hand, nice little trip-up tackle. So far, Harold Green has run the ball seven times for just 16 yards. Blake throws, makes the connection. And the ball is advanced. Is it a fumble? It might be on the field. It's going to be ruled down. And it will be a first down for Cincinnati. Carl Pickens made the catch and then lost the ball as he hit the turf. It is a catch. Carl Pickens, a very athletic wide receiver. This is the three-step drop, and Don, like you were talking about early, Blake able to get the ball out very quickly. Let's take a look and see if he drops this before the knee goes down. And all the, well, it's hard to tell. Blake had a phenomenal year team with Pickens last year. Pickens with 71 catches over 1,100 receiving yards. Penalty marker down as play is stopped at the snap. Lock showing 223 to play in the first quarter. Jacksonville leading 7-3. 77, Kevin Sargent that time leaning Ball back. Start. Number 77 offense prior to the snap. Five yards, still first down. And once again, that's a matchup to watch. 77, Kevin Sargent trying to get back quickly to control Jeff Lagerman. There he is at the top of your screen. See his head moving? Trying to get that position on Jeff Lagerman, who had a great game last week. And that sets the Bengals back to a first down and 15. Blake takes a look. Out pattern, makes the connection down to the 40-yard line of the Jaguars. Carl Pickens with the reception. 8 of 10 on the play. It'll be third down and five coming up, or second down and five. Mickey, Mickey Washington made the stop. Right, Mickey Washington on the coverage. A nice... A five-step drop, a dead bullet right into Carl Pickens' hand. It's one of the oldest plays in the book since they started throwing the ball, the 10-yard out. Pickens is 6'4 and a 7-foot high jumper. Mickey Washington a lot shorter. They'll be going to that jump ball throw pretty soon as they go to Harold Green, and he puts his head down and takes on people inside of the 36-yard line. 
Errol Green had a great 92 went to the Pro Bowl with almost 1200 yards rushing and then he's tailed off markedly only 223 yards last year what happened Beasley well you know he uh, had a little contract dispute was a little unhappy they finally paid him he didn't play very well the last two years but with Kajana Carter the pressure of competition he came into camp in great shape focused aggressive and it looks like he's back he had a real good game last week here's the pitch to Harold Green and again the Jacksonville Jaguars give up nothing to the wide run on third and three they don't get there Jeff Blake throwing the ball well he's hit six of eight for 56 yards Harold Green a little slow to get up it's like he's shaken fourth down comes up it's a win that's hard to handicap a swirling wind the place kicker Doug Pelfrey uh, Tom Coughlin said if they get to our 32 yard line it's an automatic three points with this guy you can see that his ankle and legs everything gets kind of tangled up when Jeff Lagerman grabs him here take a look at it from this angle start of the play it's a pitch sweep turned in just beautiful defense look at all the Jaguar jerseys around and right at the end you see how uh, Harold Green is all twisted and mangled by Jeff Lagerman. So their number one runner with Kaijana Carter's sideline, Harold Green shaken up, but this is a tough customer. It's hard to knock him out of a game. Harold Green still down. Bengals third down. They're two of six today. And on fourth down, they're one for one. This is fourth down and three coming up, almost four, from the 36 yard line. And if Harold Green was to have to come out of this game, Eric Bieniemy would step in. So it looks like Harold's okay and should be back in the game. That was that was not the case in a preseason game at Pontiac, Michigan. Just his third carry. John Carter looks to change directions, plants his foot, and on that play, even though he was hit not hard, he suffered a major knee injury. Operated on in Birmingham, Alabama. He's been rehabbing down there. He came up for the game today. They expect him back at full speed next season, but he'll not play this year. There's Eric Bieniemy stepping into the ball game. A lot of people blame that Kajana injury on it on AstroTurf. As you saw, nobody touched him. Rod Woodson, same thing. No, no human touched him. Kevin Smith. A lot of these guys going down. Players continue to complain about AstroTorp. Here's a ball in the air off the hands of Pickens, and it goes incomplete. So they go for it on fourth down, don't get there, and the Jaguars will take over in good field position. Mickey Washington broke up the play. Mickey Washington, a great position, three step drop, quick throw. Mickey in great position to knock the ball down. There's Mickey. He's made a, he's got a, that goes in the category of passes defensed. And he's got two of them already. An important category, and it gives the Jaguars possession of the ball at their 38-yard line. 46 seconds to go in the first quarter. They lead 7-3 to to the Jaguars. Burline on the rollout, fires on the run, and throws it away wisely as his men were covered. And the rush was coming. They had a safety blitz on. Gracie Walker was coming. Well, here they come. You see that great defensive line pushing everybody back. There comes the late blitz from Bracey Walker, applying pressure, applying pressure, and rushing uh, Berline out of the pocket. So a little breakdown. That's a little delayed blitz by the safety. Very effective if it's timed well. Almost got to him. He did force the errant throw. Walker with the late blitz. And that makes it second down and ten. Hitch back goes to Randy Jordan as he cuts back and does well to get to the line of scrimmage. As when he cut back, he ran right into 300-pound Artie Smith, the right tackle, number 70. Well, that's a lot to run into. A lot. Big Artie, big key. This defensive line is huge. Burline only two of seven throwing the ball, but one was for 71 yards and a touchdown to number 23, Randy Jordan. You have to be happy for Randy. He was so excited when we met with him. 
about this opportunity and he's made the most of it so far. He sure has first touchdown in the franchise's history and good for a seven to three lead as the first quarter winds out. So the Jaguars after 15 minutes of play hold to a seven to three lead as the NFL and NBC will be back after this. Carol Green seems to be OK. Number 28 banged up carrying the ball. Looks like he'll be back in there when the Bengals get the ball back. Right now Jacksonville has it third down and nine comes up from their 39 yard line as we open the second quarter. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Burline stands in. Confidently, and he's on the run, and Burline dives ahead, takes a shot to the head, but he's all right. And it looks like it's going to be a first down. Uh oh. <laughs> Last week, the Jaguars converted only two of 12 third downs. Today, they've converted three of four. Well, this is a big one, and a great job by Burline recognizing that he's got ten, at least 10 yards of open running. Throws a little move. And takes a real good shot from number 24, Roger Jones. But sometimes the quarterback can't do that little slide, that baseball slide. He's got to take one for the team. Yeah, he took one for the team. <laughs> if he just drawn feet first, he wouldn't have got the first down. So the Jaguars drive on. Furline at first down looks to screen the ball. Came in low to Jordan, couldn't handle it. Second and ten. Jordan got a little pop there toward the end of it, even though it was incomplete, but from his buddy, Bracey Walker. They're looking for something to talk about after this game. Who hit who, who put a move on who. Right now, I think uh, Randy's got the upper hand after his long touchdown. He does that, a 71-yard <laughs> pass play, but the only touchdown of the game and a 7-3 Jacksonville lead after Cincinnati scored first on the opening drive on a 42-yard Doug Pelfrey field goal. Three wideouts in the game. Desmond Howard to the lower right hand portion of your screen. Ernest Givens at the top. And they go to the run. Jordan fighting hard, but he can only get to the midfield strike, the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Third and long. James Francis 50 and Bracey Walker 27, the tacklers for the Bengals. Watch the Bengals converge at the football. Everybody in good position on their blocker. You see big Steve Tolvar coming in there with the one arm club to finish off the tackle. Look at Tovar, the cast he's playing with a fractured left hand. Most guys wouldn't be in the lineup. That thing looks illegal. Looks like a club. He had 11 tackles with that last week. There's a cast on it, then it's wrapped in foam rubber. And here's Burline making the throw. The catch is made, but it's short of the first down at the 45 yard line. Of Cincinnati. Pete Mitchell makes his second catch. Bracey Walker, they picked up number 27, the Bengals. Bracey Walker, after he was cut last season by Kansas City. Real good pressure. That's a blitz coming up. You see Francis coming from the outside. There's Ricardo coming. A lot of pressure on Burline that time. Good job getting the ball out of his hands, and Bracey is making some hits. And here's Brian Barker now for the Jaguars, and back deep, Carl Pickens. For the Bengals, the former All-American of Tennessee. Monster talent, they call him. Well hit ball by Barker, who can place it. Angles to the sideline, but it caroms in for a touchback. So the Bengals will take over possession of the ball with 12.37 left to go in the first half. Bengals trailing 7-3. And an interesting game here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati as the Bengals have now led twice coming from behind late in the second quarter. They got a 10-7 halftime advantage down Cricky with Beasley Reese. Some big plays in this game. Your man Randy Jordan who called this is Super Bowl had a great start. Well, I'm so happy for him. I mean he said he needed a big day. His first start ever. Great opportunity. A year out of football. And look at Randy go. Down the sideline, 71-yard touchdown. That's a great start for the young man, a great start for this team in this game. Well, he'll never have an easier touchdown, Beasley. Nobody, <laughs> nobody covered him. Nobody was there. Then as the game wore on, Steve Berline, really the key guy in the offense of the Jacksonville Jaguars, had to leave the game after he was hit, dropping to pass, strained a knee. We're told he'll not be back today. And here's how that injury occurred in the second quarter. 
Well, a block lost on the right-hand side, and Ricardo McDonald will crawl into his leg and twist it just a little bit. And as a result, Steve will have to sit down. They'll do that. They'll twist it a little They'll bit. They'll try to they? twist it. <laughs> and then the surprise of the day, the Bengals having so many problems cracking this tough Jaguar defense. Who did they put in to be a tackle eligible but a rookie from Syracuse? Rootin Tootin, Melvin Tootin. And Melvin has something to root and toot about here. Well, he'll never he'll never stop talking about this. This is a great play. A great basketball player, 6'6". Six, six, it's, six, six, it's like he's pulling down a rebound, tackled ineligible. He tells the lineman that he's going to be the eligible receiver, and Jeff Blake very happy. A great performance by Jeff in the first half. But as mentioned, Beasley, in the first half, you really almost have to go to a bag of tricks to crack this Jacksonville defense. Now, this is an extremely well-prepared team. It is surprisingly impressive for a expansion team. I mean, Dick Duran, the defensive coordinator, has done a great job. It's a very difficult team to gain any headway on. Let's look at the Coors Light. Halftime statistics. The two coaches talked about things like time of possession, and Cincinnati's been winning that, and they are winning on the scoreboard. Very good passing by Jeff Blake. He's been very accurate. Under the rush, he's had to elude the pass rushers a lot of times, but he's managed to do that. You see the time of possession. Cincinnati with an advantage. A lot of people discount time of possession, and some coaches think it's absolutely fundamental to, to winning a game. Well, Jeff Blake was 14 of 21. He was very accurate with one touchdown. He found seven different receivers. Now, by contrast, Berline was 4 of 12 for 98 yards, and he only completed passes to two receivers. One, the touchdown to Jordan. A Jordan who caught two passes, and Mitchell, the tight end, caught two passes. Now the kickoff. The ball is hit deep. Willie Jackson takes it at his five-yard line. Out to the 20, and he breaks it across the 30 and the 40, and Willie Jackson's not done until the kicker, Doug Pelfrey, finally runs him out of bounds. On the Cincinnati side of the field, a tremendous run back by Jackson, and now the Jaguars and Mark Brunel at quarterback have a great opportunity to start this drive. Very talented young receiver, running away from people. He gets good blocking from his teammates, and Pelfrey. <laughs> Pelfrey is something else. Pelfrey is getting underpaid by a ton. He's making the, about the league minimum, one of the best kickers in the league, making not, tackles. Not for long is he going to be <laughs> one of the lowest paid, though. Willie Jackson out of the University of Florida was originally with the Cowboys. Here's Burnell throwing in a nice left-handed toss right on the money to Desmond Howard, his first catch of the day. Here's the way the quarterbacks fared last week. Burline 7 of 17 for 60 yards. Mark Brunell had a big interception that really ended the Houston game. He had 36 yards rushing, though, and came into this game the leading rusher for the football team. So he is very athletic. Uh, they say he has a big arm and really more athletic skills than Burline, but Burline makes better decisions. Kevin Smolin now informs us that uh, Steve Verline definitely will not return in the second half because of the knee strain. They like Purnell. They say we have two good quarterbacks. Here's a throw to Desmond Howard, and it's almost picked off. And again, Beasley, there's three men around the receiver. Bracey Walker, number 27, with a great break on the ball, able to knock that one down. Three men at the ball once again. And one of the best is Darrell Williams, and he's down right now, a former Pro Bowl player. A free safety and number one draft choice out of Miami of Florida. Tremendous player. Now there's pressure on Burnell just at the throw. Big Daddy Dan Wilkerson right there in his face, putting a shot on him, so the ball is up high. And look at Williams with the tap on the ball. Jones coming across the top. Bracey Walker underneath. Here's another look at Big Daddy. You see him start from the right, fold around to the inside, and hit Brunel just as he releases the football. Big Daddy Beasley starting to dominate this game. They can't hold him out. Well, Big Daddy will be a force. He's starting to become a force this season. Probably a pretty good move to move him out to defensive end. And that time he ran what the defensive linemen know as a game with the inside tackle one step forward folding back inside and good pressure on the quarterback the game being when they loop around each other making it tougher for the offensive guys to block him 
Third down and 10. Brunel hands off and there's nothing doing. Big Daddy there and stuffs the run. Big Daddy, I tell you, he was the number one pick. Some say he was disappointing last year, but others say he really looked good. Just didn't make a lot of spectacular sacks. Big Daddy's second man in unblocked because on that particular play, the design is for the runner back, running back to pass Big Daddy's position before he has the ability to get there. But Big Daddy's so quick, he's able to slide inside and make the tackle. Danny, his mother calls him, Big Danny Wilkinson. The rest of the world knows him as Big Daddy. There's the punt downfield. Again, nicely hit by Barker. What a punt and good coverage down to the three-yard line. So superior special teams play by the Jaguars. Now pins Cincinnati back for their opening drive of the third quarter. Mike Brown, the president and general manager of the Cincinnati Bengals, the man in the forefront of a drive to get a new stadium for Cincinnati. And that'll come to a voter's decision in March when they'll vote on upping the sales tax in this area by 1%, 6.5%. To finance what would be a new football and a new baseball stand. They're actually looking for two new stadiums, aren't they, Beasley? They need one. This field, I walked on it earlier. Nice completion out to Darnay Scott. And it is uh, not very good. There are a lot of uh, seam spots where the bases are. There's a great look at it. And that's, it just doesn't feel right when you walk on that and you go from one surface to the other. There's a different texture. So they need a new one. Uh, the people are people kind of vote I think with their pocketbooks and with their emotions so this team needs to play well to get that emotion part of it if uh, Mike Brown and the Bengals are to get a new stadium what the Bengals do could really uh, have a lot to do with how the voters feel at vote time as the enemy comes wide to the near side turns it upfield on second down and four and powers his way to what could be a first down looks like he has it as we look at the 10 minute ticker the enemy with superior balance great attitude they love the guy here and he's really played well today that that was a classic second effort that time to get to that first down marker the enemy is the lone setback after he got the first down Blake on first and ten has stripped to the ball and see who's got it the Jaguars have stripped the ball and taken it back. So Jacksonville will now have it first and goal at the five yard line. Here's a good look at it. Jeff Blake in the pocket. Joel Sminji comes around with the big hand to bat it down. And Jeff Wagerman comes up with the football. A huge development, another terrific play by one of the best young defenses in football. You see Smengi coming in and getting the right arm of Jeff Blake. And then Lagerman is on it. Now they teach quarterbacks, Don, to hold that ball with two hands. I mean, yeah. that's what they prefer. And Jeff had it cocked back there with one hand, and Joel was able to knock it down. And we're told, Beasley, it's officially a sack and a fumble. That's the official ruling on the play. Jordan heads in his second touchdown of the game, but will it come back as a penalty marker is fired in? There could be an illegal block. And it looks to be against the Bengals. Yep, holding call. So instead of first and goal from five, they'll set him back. Touchdown negated. And Randy Jordan limping a bit as he comes out of the huddle. But he appears to be all right going back in. The man who called this. Number 73 offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. The rookie number two draft choice, Brian DeMarco from Michigan State, who started every preseason game and now in his second start in the regular season, called for holding. So it'll be first and goal from the 12 yard line. Expensive penalty. That hurt, especially when you keep into account of the fact that he's on the other side of the field. That's right. Not at the point of attack. Came to the near side of the left side. He's the right tackle. Brunel lost it to the end zone, and the ball is broken up. 
Making the play was Rod Jones, number 25. The antenna receiver was Willie Jackson, who's becoming more and more a part of this Jaguar offense. It's a good possum play by the wide receiver. He kind of acts like he's not really involved and at the last second jumps up. But you see that Rod Jones quickly spins around to get his hands in the receiver's face. You know, that was only the second penalty of the day for Jacksonville. I mean, they played well, and one mistake was on uh, special team. That's right. That was a big one, though. It was a big one, the holding call. Second down. There's a swing pass and a drop by Jordan, who makes the mistake. It is so easy to make on any level of football, running before you catch it. So clearly that time. He turned his head before he started running. Watch him turn his head away from the ball. See, he's turning away to the right before he actually catches it. There's Coach Tom Coughlin, so disappointed. Todd Kelly was the guy putting the pressure on. Third down. And making sure that they get something. On the right page here, Coughlin decides to use a timeout. A good move. The scoring opportunities haven't been that prevalent, so he wants to make sure that his quarterback is ready for the right play. Big play here, Beasley, in this young franchise's history. One of the biggest, as they could take the lead if they make the right choice. Third down from the 12 yard line. Brunel in the shotgun. Third and goal. Here comes the rush. There's the throw. Too much on it. Incomplete. And the field goal unit will come out. Cedric Tillman, number 87, was the guy they went to on a kind of a sideline fade. Corner Rick, fade. Ricardo McDonald with great pressure that time. Tom Coughlin, the head coach, watching it fly and <laughs> trying to help with the catch. <laughs> he was a good catcher himself as a wingback at Syracuse as a collegiate player, Coughlin. Brunel's 0 for 5 throwing the ball since coming in for the injured Steve Verline, who strained a knee when he was hit earlier. Hollis with the field goal try, and he splits it. So Mike Hollis drives it through with 12-18 to go in the third quarter, and he ties the game at 10-all. Parker, the holder, is a good one. Hollis missed his first attempt as a, as a Jaguar. It has been perfect since then. When we talked with Coach Coughlin yesterday, he talked about it's a game of making plays. You've got to make plays. He said we dropped a touchdown pass last week. We dropped two interception chances that were right in our hands. You can't win unless you make those plays. Randy Jordan dropped the screenplay that was very well set up that could have resulted in his second touchdown of the game. They go and they're talking to DeMarco here. <laughs> DeMarco's had some trouble now. He's a very talented player. He's got the holding call. He jumped off one time. He's mad. He was he's real mad. That can be good in this game. That can be good. <laughs> Matt is good in football. <laughs> Called for a holding call with uh, negated a touchdown that would have given the Jaguars the lead for the second time. They subsequently uh, kick the field goal and tie the game. And here's Mike Hollis to kick off. And David Dunn, the rookie, speaks through his back. High kick. Dunn moves up on it. Gets it at the 12. 20. And getting the tough yards on the return, he works his way out to the 29-yard line where he's taken down by Ryan Christofferson of the Jaguars. Here comes Jeff Blake, and you'll remember his last possession, stripped to the ball, and then soon after they had the tying field goal. Overall, some impressive numbers, though, 15-22. And he's thrown for the lone Bengal touchdown to a tackle eligible, Melvin Tootin. The enemy 
20 runs. Both hands on the ball. He works his way ahead for a game of close to four yards out to the 34-yard line where Corey Mayfield tackled him. 98. I love the way the enemy continues to drive his legs, the way he protects the ball, and you will always get a second effort from Eric Bin. Yeah, he's a he's a worker. He's a came in from San Diego. They were real happy to get him. Out of the head for a gain of five yards on the play. Jeff Blake with a quick drop. Stands in the pocket, releases the ball, and it's a drop right on the hands of Carl Pickens. That's a coverage drop, Don. The defenders were so close in great position that you had physical bodies flashing in front of Carl Pickens' face. It's another example of how well this defense is coached. See people coming. He knew he was about to be struck from Mickey Washington on the outside. Real good look from Blake's view. You see Mickey coming in with the shoulder. Carl saw that and knew he was about to get knocked out. Blake on third and five. The enemy comes out of the backfield. Blake looks at him, throws the ball to the enemy, and he's got a first down. So another play by Eric the enemy who is Colorado's all-time leading touchdown scorer, all-time leading rusher, and all-time leading scorer overall with 254 collegiate points. There's the enemy sneaking out of the backfield, number 21, crossing to the other side of the field. The ball is put in the one position where the defenders cannot touch it, allowing the enemy to gather it in and scoop forward for the first down. It was a threaded throw and right where it had to be. Coverage was really very good. But it's a first down for the Bengals in this tie game. 10-10. The enemy's got a nice set of hands. Even the bad throws he catches. <laughs> Vinnie Clark knocked him down, but it was a five-yard gain. Now that one was down around his knees. And the enemy sneaking out of the backfield once again. See him circle over to the inside. Blake drops it at his knees, but he gathers it in and gains a nice five or six yards. The enemy originally a second round draft choice of the San Diego Chargers had limited playing time. Nathan Means is their main runner. He stands in and blocks for Jeff Blake and Carl Pickens was not looking at the ball. Looked like he thought it was a running play. He was looking to block the cornerback Vinnie Clark. That was a blitz adjustment that Carl did not pick up. He was supposed to run a quick end. Look at Blake looking over at him smiling. Benny Clark was trying to break forward and make the interception and Carl just by accident bumped into him or it would have been a touchdown for Jacksonville. Benny was breaking hard forward to the football. The Bengals got away with one that time. If they got it he had an open track to the end zone. Third down arises. A blitz and a throw and a catch by Pickens. What a nice play. Kyle Pickens shows his stuff. Quick out. They couldn't guard him. Precision offense. This quick out is so quick. Five yard out. The ball is in the air before he actually breaks. Solid offensive play. Very quick. That advances the ball down to the 46-yard line. They talk Beasley about the importance of third down conversions. Well, the count is picking up now for Cincinnati. Five times they've converted 11 opportunities. So that's getting up into that good area. Here's the enemy breaking it into the open field. And Eric the enemy runs it inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line before Mickey Washington brings him down. Eric the enemy is making a statement here today. Now, this is a major league cut right there. That cut up was so quick. Good blocking, a 28-yard run by Eric Vienemy. Look at him stretch it out at the end. Mickey Washington bringing him down. Six carries for 43 yards for Eric Vienemy. Six catches for 62 yards. This time it is Harold Green who's been quiet for a while since banging a leg early in the game. But Green rockets on down close to the 10-yard line. You have to wonder, Don, is the defense 
being uh, over challenged. I mean, just a little tired maybe from being on the field for so much because suddenly this defense that was so stingy. Harold Green stepping in with a nice run. Eric Bieniemy putting on a show. There's no question the Bengals offensive line is winning at the line of scrimmage right now. Blowing the Jaguars off the ball. Here's Green again. And Green takes it straight ahead. And he's down to the goal line. And he's in. Touchdown signal is given. And the Bengals take the lead. Most impressive drive of this season, keyed by the terrific play of Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy, the first one out to give Harold Green a hook. That's why they love him. It's almost unfair that Eric, almost single-handedly, with great blocking and, of course, and good passing by Blake, takes the team down there, and Harold Green gets the payoff. But once again, Eric showing his great team attitude. He sure did. He got it down there, and then. Green was on the payoff then, but it's a team game, and the team goes in front. The Cincinnati team by a score of 17 to 10. Third time they've held the lead, as you are watching the NFL on NBC. A 71-yard drive, nine plays. Harold Green was on the payoff end, but Eric Bieniemy has touched the ball just 12 times, Beasley, and he's really put up some numbers. 104 yards total offense, 62 in uh, receiving yards, and 42 uh, uh, rushing yards. Averaging seven yards a rush, he's run the ball just six times. Pelfrey kicks it off downfield. Jimmy Smith for the Jaguars from the eight. The 23-yard line by James Joseph, number 36 for the Bengals. The last, back. the last touchdown by Harold Green, just an example of great effort and great blocking. Look how he finishes off this run, pounding into Harry Cole and twisting himself in for the touchdown. You also have to congratulate the offensive lineman Bruce Kozerski and Joe Walters for giving him a nice hole. And he literally rode the wave right into the end zone and almost was thrown in. And it's now 17 to 10 games. Cincinnati in the lead. They've led 3 0, 10 7, and now 17 10. Brunel, a scrambler. Here's a penalty marker down as Brunel wisely steps out of bounds before big Artie Smith, number 70, can level him. I believe they had to hold Big Daddy. Big Daddy lost containment. You see him talking to the officials. There's Big Daddy, number 99. See him go inside. He lost containment just a little bit. And I believe that Pete Mitchell, the tight end, kind of grabbed his legs a little bit at the end of that. I'm not sure. 66 offense. It is on the offense. Repeat first time. Going to call it on Bowens. John Bowen's the left guard, but Big Daddy is drawing attention. He's every play they got extra people blocking him. There's 66. I don't know what he could have done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's wondering. This man has been wrongly accused. I think. <laughs> he looks guilty though. All that hair looks tough. <laughs> <laughs> he looks guilty. <laughs> Brunel has not completed a pass now. Oh, he almost had one. A drop by Randy Jordan, his second. He won't be in there long for Coughlin's team dropping balls like that, thrown right at him. Now that is the fourth dropped pass by Jacksonville. Watch Big Daddy here working, 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 being held, still working. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to so badly to body slam him when he got there, but it was too late. The ball was gone, but a drop by Jordan, the fourth. Not by Jordan, but the fourth on the Jaguar team. On second down, Jaguars try to run it, but there's not much there. As Randy Jordan takes it across the 17-yard line, gets about three, and that brings up third and long yardage. Third and 19. And the momentum has definitely moved to the home team here. 
Bengal defense starting to cause some problems. Jaguars are starting to make some mistakes. A drop here, a miscue there, a holding call here and there. Got to settle down. Brunel escapes the rush. Somehow Brunel's still on the run. And then wisely has to bail out as Cincinnati's defense has taken over this side of the game. Ricardo McDonald was coming on the rush. From the top of your screen, Ricardo McDonald seemed coming around being oh, yeah, held, he held yeah. slung on the ground. Ricardo is playing one heck of a game. He is that. And he's another guy coming back from that ACL injury you're talking about. Back in peak form. Here's the punt downfield by Brian Barker of Jacksonville. And again, he boots it down, and there'll be no return as the ball rolls to the 41 yard line of the Bengals. Cincinnati, though, will start in good field position, holding to a 17 10 lead as the NFL and NBC continues. Mistakes. Young teams, a continuing problem. The mistake chart tells a big story. Here it is, Beasley. You've got a lot of passes dropped by the Jaguars. You've got passes dropped by the Bengals. One turnover, the big turnover by the Bengals that led to a Jaguar field goal. And that is the key. Both coaches talked about it. It's not so much the difference in talent. Offensive center Dave Wydell of Jacksonville was telling us it's the number of mistakes that players make. And a handsome mistake chart it was. <laughs> As the pitch back goes to Eric the enemy who runs across the 40 and gets back only to the line of scrimmage and that gives us a chance to go back to New York and to Greg Gumbel. Greg. All right Don pretty good quarterback duel going on in Dallas. Aikman is thrown for two run for one. This is John Elway's second of the day 59 yards to Anthony Miller. No Dion in that Dallas secondary yet three minutes to play in the third. The Cowboys lead over the Broncos is now 21 14 Don and Beasley back to you. And here it's no <laughs> yeah he's getting it done. You got him picked to go run the table That's run the table. The enemy's running this table as he continues to just play great football. Play after play, making the catches, making the runs, driving ahead across the 45 yard line out to the 47. No one has really given them. Um, well, there's Steve Berline. Oh, my goodness. It's not good. Well, folks in Jacksonville, sometimes it looks worse than it really is. They'll put a guy on crutches or wrap his knee up just so that he doesn't uh, put too much weight on it. Number 11 next to him was a rookie from Southern California, Rob Johnson. Who's the third quarterback? Blake, long ball. Nicely done defensively by Mickey Washington, but there is going to be a penalty marker down. Looked like Washington successfully screened the much taller Carl Pickens away from the ball, but they're going to call Mickey in a foul. Well, you'll have to watch me here on this one, Don, because as an old defensive back, that looked like pretty good position. I mean, that's what he wants to do is is replace the step to the wide receiver step into his tracks put your body against him and shield him from the ball pass interference number 25 defense automatic first down Spotify well they're changing everything <laughs> Actually, what Mickey did was he backed up. When Pickens went outside, he stepped into his footsteps, replaced the route, shielded him from the ball. And Pickens was fighting to get around him, and, you know, I guess that's the reason for the call. And the call results in a first down for the Bengals inside the Jacksonville 40. Off to the enemy who's become the workhorse of this offense for Cincinnati as the game wears on. The starter, Harold Green, banged the leg early. He's come back in on and off, did score the last touchdown, the go-ahead score. But the enemy's been the guy. Well, it looks like he deserves to be um, to be featured in this offense the way he's running right now. 
They've run the ball nine times for 52 yards. Wheaton has 12 carries for 36. Pitch back to Biemini. And he's down to the 30-yard line, a gain of about three. That'll bring up third down and three. Don Davey stringing him out. The defensive tackle, 92, makes the stop. But now the Bengals with a seven-point lead, running the clock. It's down to 3:45 in the third quarter. There's the numbers of Eric Bieniemy. Came here from San Diego. He said, "I want to play." Wasn't playing a lot out there. He's getting the call a lot today, and he will again. Blake, good fake, stands in, lost the ball to Darnay Scott. And good defense by the Jaguars separates him from the ball at the five. The Bengals are famous for that play. The receivers are so athletic that Jeff Blake just throws it up high, knowing that his player will outjump your player. As a look at it, play action pass, nice high soft lob pass. Darnay should have had. He had his hands on it, then Mike Dumas knocked it away. That brings up fourth down. As Tom Coughlin says if they get to our 32 yard line or inside at three points. Well they're at the 30 right now. Pelfrey's out. This time it's not three points. He's wide right. His first miss in a long time. He had five field goals last week. Another today. He's six for seven on the year and the Bengals hold to their seven point lead. Late in the third quarter, the Bengals lead the Jaguars by seven. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. Jaguars badly in need of a big play. They got one early in the game in the first quarter. And Randy Jordan took a swing pass and went 71 yards, but they have not had big play since. Well, that's what they're looking for. The Jaguars say we have, we put people in position. Somebody's got to make a play. So far, only the one big play. Well, they've got a quarterback in there, Mark Burnell, who likes to run when he has the ball. And you're never sure what he's going to do, but he's not thrown the ball well since he came in for Steve Berline, who had a strained knee suffer when he was hit in the second quarter. Right now, Berline's on crutches. And Brunel pitches to Randy Jordan, and he meets nothing but a wave of Bengals who get him at the 42 yard line of Jacksonville. Andre Collins, 55, led the tacklers along with Rod Jones. They had that one play scouted so well, Beasley, that swing pass. I mean, Jordan was left uncovered. Obviously, they'd seen something in the Cincinnati defense. Sprung that early. Cincinnati's made the adjustments. I don't think they expected to see a lot of Jordan today. Nobody else did except for Jordan. He was told he was going to get the start. Good block by Jordan. Long ball downfield. And what a catch by Willie Jackson. But they rule him out of bounds. <laughs> hey. Dave Shula, you see him there, was running up the sideline with the receiver and helping the official make the call. Yeah. He's out. <laughs> he was right there. David Shula, guy who's been look, under pressure. Look at David in the back. <laughs> now, David is an old wide receiver. He's got a little foot speed. Yeah, from Dartmouth. <laughs> played briefly with the Colts. Needing wins in his fourth year as head coach, his record is 12 wins and 37 losses. September and October have been especially cruel. But this year, they could be off to a 2-0 start. Brunel in trouble. He gets out of it, and he's on the run. Mark Brunel across midfield and inside the 40-yard line. Caught on a third down and sixth play. He runs ahead for 25 yards. That's the Brunel difference. We have a player down on the field, John That's Copeland. Big John Copeland, the defensive end from Alabama, one of those blue chippers in the front wall of the Bengals. Big John could just be exhausted. There's a lot of running on that play. I think I saw one of the people uh, attending to him give the OK sign, like he's all right. Huh? But here's the play. Tremendous pressure. Ricardo coming from the back and Brunel's great speed. Look at Copeland. You see that alignment falls on top of him. Brunel's athletic ability saving the team that time.
Don yeah. Shula's had a Dave Shula that is had a lot of trouble in September and October. Three and twenties. Real trouble. Yeah, since 93, no wins. But the man who runs this team is staunchly behind him. And certainly a win today could catapult this team off to a big start. 2-1-0 start would really give them ahead of steam with two possible wins coming up. They're playing at Seattle. Good to see Big John Copeland up and all right. Larry Pecatello says of Copeland and of Big Daddy Wilkins, they're both twice as good as they were last season. There's some blue chippers. You lose this many games as the Cincinnati has. They've been three and 13, three of the last four years. You get some great players in your lineup. Here are the next five games. 17th at Seattle, and 24th at Houston in October. They'll take on Miami, Woo. Tampa Bay, and then they'll get a week off. Dave Shula's dad, Don Shula, he's a powerhouse this year. His team blew out the Jets last week, dominated New England today, 20 to 3 at Foxborough. Would be a super year for Coach Shula of Miami. Desmond Howard has blockers in front. And he gets down to the 31 yard line, a first down carry on an end around, gets a gain of almost nine yards. Before Darrell Williams knocked him down. Um, Mark Brunell leading that play. And Mark should have put a block on number 31, Darrell Williams. Clapped his hands, a little disappointed with himself for not seeing Darrell flash by so quickly. But that's a super play, especially with Brunell leading out front. Second down and a long two, almost three. Artie Smith, number 70, makes this head on stick. This big guy doesn't get a lot of the claim around all those high number ones, but he's a player too. Third year from Louisiana Tech, waiver player from San Francisco. You can see how the defensive line neutralizes every gap, not giving up any yardage whatsoever. Already falling off to make the tap. Big down now for Brunell and the Jaguars. Third down, they need almost four. Hand off. James Francis comes up and gets Vaughn Dunbar. Vaughn Dunbar, who was just picked up this week from New Orleans, gets his first carry as a Jaguar, and it's going to be short of the first down. That brings up fourth down and two, and they're going to go for it. Down by seven. Maybe the last play of the third quarter, Beasley. Dunbar out. Randy Jordan back in because this is a critical play, and Jordan knows the plays. Dunbar's been with the team for three days. Fourth and two for the Jaguars. Brunel stands in, makes the throw. The catch is made. It's a first down. And more down to the 22-yard line. It's a 10-yard gain on the play and a first down, and that'll conclude the third quarter. Desmond Howard made the play. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Ready for the start of the fourth quarter now. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, the home of the Cincinnati Reds and the Bengals. And right now, the Bengals looking to hold a seven-point lead. Jacksonville with first down and ten coming up inside the Cincinnati 25. Brunel, he's had trouble throwing the ball. Makes a completion to Jordan. He is tripped up on a big play. By Ricardo McDonald, the linebacker from Pittsburgh, his twin brother, Devon, is a good linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts. You can see the time of possession, that key stat is getting closer for Jacksonville. 21 59 to 23 01. Cincinnati still more with the first down area, 6 to 15. Second and ten for the Jaguars. Down by seven. Brunel fires. Intercepted. It's picked off by Rod Jones, number 25. And he's not done. 
Rod Jones, a former running back, takes it out to the 30. So the Bengals stop the Jaguar threat, a 25-yard return. Jaguars might have almost took the ball back from them. Mark Brunell with a, a shot here that was really a bad throw. And that's really all you can say about that one. That was a bad throw. Brunell, one of nine throwing the ball for nine yards and then this interception. So they've had more yards and interception returns of the Bengals with that 25-yard return than they had on his completed pass. Well, that time, Brunell actually had time to throw. but yes, he I, did. Yeah, in the, the other dropbacks, I know he was really harassed, but that time he had time. Bengals will be running the ball now, looking to run the clock with a 7-0 lead. And off to Eric Bieniemy, who's been the workhorse and continues to be as he takes it out to the 32. Tom Coughlin talking about, I don't want any what-ifs in the meeting on Monday. We gonna, came away with a defeat because of things we could have made, plays we could have made that we didn't. Well, what if a, we did this? That's a big what-if because they were in red area. Uh, Desmond Howard has just made a great first down before the change of the quarter. And if Brunel didn't like that, he should have just thrown it away. The enemy continues to pound away. 11 carries for 59 yards. Five and a half a carry. Long ball downfield. What a catch by Carl Pickens for a touchdown. Magnificent, a 68-yard touchdown pass. athletic effort what hands I'm taller I'm faster I'll catch it and he did and here's the extra point by Pelfrey and all of a sudden the Bengals have taken command 24 to 10 with 13 16 left to play we'll have the Bengals kickoff as the NFL and NBC continues back to live action Pelfrey kicks off and here's Jimmy Smith. He breaks it. And Jimmy Smith all the way out to the 42-yard line for Jacksonville. Pickens of Cincinnati, number 81, with five catches for 102 yards. Here's the difference in winning and losing. Steve Burline had Ernest Givens a step and a half behind Roger Jones and overthrew it. Jeff Blake would call Pickens one step in front of Mickey Washington. It's a strike. Perkins hauls it. Pickens hauls it in and takes it down for the touchdown. There's the coach. And there's Kenny Anderson saying, look at the camera and say hi to your mom. Last March, the Arizona Cardinals offered him four years, $11 million plus. Cincinnati met the offer and kept him, and now a sack of Brunel by John Copeland, number 92. The dam is breaking. Yes, it is. These blue chip linemen are dominating the game for the Bengals. That's four sacks for the Bengals. Brunel absolutely ineffective trying to throw the ball. He doesn't have a hope out there. There's no comparison between Brunel and two games that we've seen in Burline and throwing the ball. Burline vastly superior. Brunel a better runner. Out pattern that time Brunel throws a pass and completes it for Ernest Givens and he makes the play out to the 45 yard line as we go back to New York Greg. All right Don an update on the defending AFC champion San Diego Chargers Stan Humphreys his second touchdown pass of the day 15 yards to Ronnie Harmon down the sideline the Chargers lead the Seattle Seahawks 14 to 10 just under six minutes to play Don. Thanks Greg under just 12 minutes to go just over 12 as the clock ticks down in the fourth quarter. Jacksonville in need of big plays to get back in it. They're down out of Jaguars 24 to 10. 
Grinnell barely got the snap, and then he's overrun. Markers are down. Tovar came in a middle linebacker blitz. Todd Kelly got the pressure. Don, I give that one to crowd noise. Brunel was screaming to his lineman, trying to make the adjustment. The linemen were looking back, trying to hear him. The crowd was screaming. Ball start, offensive center, illegal snap. Five yards, still third down. There it is. Dave Wydell, a little shoulder deep before he snapped the ball. Dave Wydell telling us yesterday that personnel is not our problem. He said, we've got a lot of good personnel. He was with Denver last year. He said, eliminating mistakes is the problem, and that was one. Third down and 12 for the Jaguars. That time they get the five yards back. As 98 Todd Kelly left early, Brunel just 3 of 10 throwing the ball for 21 yards for Jacksonville. See if Bruce Wilkerson left early. Neutral zone infraction, number 98 on the defense. It was on Todd Kelly. Caused the offense to move. Five yards, still third down. Todd Kelly, 98, bottom right corner of your screen. Taking the track start, trying to get the roll on the start. I think he might have seen Wydell kind of pivot back. Thought the ball was snapped. Saw him out of the corner of his eye. <laughs> At any rate, it is third down and seven for Jacksonville. Jaguars badly in need of a big play. And here comes the blitz. Grinnell stands in, and they get him free ball. Cincinnati has it. Ricardo McDonald picks it up at the 44-yard line. Rolled a sack and a fumble, as was the earlier call. Well, the dam has broken. <laughs> Ricardo McDonald, he blasted one of his teammates going for the ball. Darrell Williams is now helped off at this point. It looks like it's more than just a little nick. He was hit on the ankle as by McDonald diving for the loose ball. At the end of this play, Darrell Williams is trying to pick the ball up. Ricardo McDonald, look as he dives to recover it right into Darrell's ankle. And that's the cause of the injury. Darrell was trying to pick it up and try to run a touchdown. Bengals get the ball back, and here is an open run for Jeff Poffman, who doesn't get the call off, and mostly a blocker. And uh, Jacksonville might have the ball back. We'll see if it's ruled a fumble. Mickey Washington picked up the ball. Let's see what the call is. Jaguars seem to think it's their ball. And their offense is coming out. Out of the field. So. Cothran lost it, and it's right back over to Jacksonville. Big opportunity for Jacksonville here. At the end of the run. See, I thought he was down right there with the knee. Yeah, it looked like there's no question. I thought he was down right with the knee, but Jacksonville gets the opportunity. Crowd thinks that too as they're booing the replay high above. David Shula with a consoling word for Catherine. Shula in the position to be consoling at this point as his team's in command. 24 to 10, but a lot of time left. 11.35 to play. Andy Jordan running hard and well. He's ahead for 11 yards and a first down for the Jaguars. Gracie Walker and Sam Shade, a couple of defensive backs got it. Reach blocking, Wydell doubling up with Tom Milinski. First and ten for the Jaguars, who need big plays. Brunel's had trouble finding them with the passing game, so he goes to the run. And again, they run well. Catching the Bengals in his own defense, looking for a pass. Jordan running low, weaving in and out of little spaces. Two good runs back-to-back. 
Down by 14, running the ball because that's all they've been able to do with Brunella quarterback. Sooner or later, he's going to have to put it in the air. A costly interception the last time by Brunel when they were down close. He goes back to the run. And a good one it is as Vaughn Dunbar runs quickly down to the 40-yard line. And it's a first down for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Darrell Williams Boy, looks okay, doesn't he? That's remarkable. <laughs> it looked like his leg was broken. Then he comes in on the next play. Look at him reading, reading. And then an uh, old-fashioned cowboy rope tackle up around the head. Terrific tackler. Jaguars moving with a running game right now. Here's Brunel to throw. Stands in, makes the throw, and the catch is made down to the 25-yard line. Pete Mitchell with his third catch of the game, and now they're waving it off. That looked like a superior effort. Once again, this is a throw in a major crowd. So he drops it on the ground there. Good call. Yeah, he had it. Well, didn't touch the ground, though, did it? Yes, it did. Yeah. Burnell on second and ten. Out pattern, but he overshoots Desmond Howard. Out of the 30-yard line, this could be a late hit on Burnett. That would be a first down. Ricardo McDonald coming late. Personal foul on the defense. Roughing the passer. First down, Jacksonville. Ricardo's at the top of your screen. And he definitely comes in late. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 56, defense. Late and led with the head there. 15, first down. Wasn't a dirty shot, it was an effort shot. Carlo has been flying to the ball all day long. But you can't lead with that head even by accident. And that's apparently what he did, hit with the helmet. Personal foul, first down, the Jaguars drive on, down by 14 with 9.38 to play. Grinnell lost it nicely to Randy Jordan, and he weaves inside to the 21-yard line. Here are two more penalty markers in. Marker stopping the clock with 9.31 to play as Gordon McCarter checks with the umpire to see what the call is. Probably holding on offense. Nope. Legal receiver downfield. That takes a lot of deep, uh, discipline from the offensive linemen. See, they have to, even though it's a, see, they fake the pass, then they fall out, and you have to stay back you know, behind the line of scrimmage. Five yards, repeat first down. The right guard, Tom Myslinski. Yeah, Tom was across and then came back to the correct side to help on the block, but he was definitely across the line of scrimmage. As you point out, it's an easy thing to do on a screen yes, play like that. Total yards, Cincinnati with a down at edge there, and on the scoreboard, 24 to 10 to the Bengals' lead. Jacksonville with first down and 15. Tovar, the middle linebacker, despite the broken hand, makes the stop of Randy Jordan for a gain of only about two yards. Tovar is a rising star middle linebacker, a former third-round draft choice out of Ohio State. He's one of the key Bengals who's up for a new contract, along with the kicker, Pelfrey, the quarterback, Jeff Blake. And Ricardo McDonald, the outside linebacker, been playing so well. As Tovar, I think he was checking his watch. So he's checking to see if that hand's still intact. Jordan, 16 carries for 51 yards. Brunel, looking for help. He fires and makes the strike. And a well, effort, well done effort by Brunel, who stayed behind the line of scrimmage. No illegal forward pass signaled. And he got it to Cedric Tillman for a first down. This is where Brunel can really help you. His athletic ability here. Now, he thinks he's sacked. Watch him just kind of crumble down right there and then sees that he gets away with it. 
Gets out in the clear, actually calling uh, directions by pointing downfield. That's where he is at his best, a 17-yard game. Now a score here, and Jacksonville's back in the game. And the Jaguars there will fight it out to the final gun no matter what the score. They might not play perfect football, but they're very, very motivated. Here is Jordan running wide, cutting up, bouncing inside. He got ahead for a gain of about five yards down to the eight-yard line. Bengals hit him hard. Rod Jones, a cornerback, got him. But this Jacksonville team, they were in camp a week before any other team last July. And they are very well conditioned, ready to go four hard quarters. You got, haven't got them put away till it's the final gun. Burline went out with an ankle, the knee injury in the second quarter. Hit on a pass rush. Grinnell has been in there ever since, and now we have a timeout signaled for. That stops the clock with 7.25 left to play, and Brunel heads to the sideline for some counsel. The NFL on NBC will continue after this. We're back at Cincinnati. Jacksonville driving down, as you see, 24 to 10. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. Second down and eight for the first down. Second and nine for a touchdown. Brunel on a rollout. What a great play as he had the whole Bengal defense going for the fake. And Brunel rolls in untouched, and the Jaguars inch closer. Down 24-16 with the extra point coming up. Superior play <laughs> calling. Everybody's fooled by this. No one's even close to Brunel. He has an escort into the end zone. This Jacksonville team will not quit. That execution was perfect. Lachey Maston, the fullback leading around. He didn't even have to block anybody. And Brunel with his speed makes it count. Mike Hollis hits the extra point, and it is now 24 to 17. So Coach Coughlin and his Jaguars still in the game, but they need to get the ball back. And Cincinnati will try hard to run it and run the clock. Still a lot of time, though, 720. Now, Brunel is heating up a little bit. He's 4 of 12 for 38 yards. He completed four of his last passes and then uses his great running ability to score a touchdown. That's his best suit. That's right. So after a shaky start, he's started to make an impact. And, and I should, really shouldn't say shaky start. I mean, the, the world was coming in to sack this guy and pound him around. So it's not like he was dropping back with some real clear sights and visions out downfield. 65 yards on eight plays. Brunel on an eight-yard rollout. Brunel, a much sought-after quarterback. Out of the University of Washington, he was with the Green Bay Packers as the backup to Brent Favre. The Eagles tried hard to get him in the offseason in the trade. Jacksonville made the trade, trading third and fifth round draft choices. And they feel they have two good quarterbacks. He did not have good success throwing the ball, but running it is another story. He led the Jaguars to two come-from-behind wins in the fourth quarter in the preseason. Little as those wins mean at this point. Here's the kickoff by Hollis. Well hit downfield to rookie David Dunn. Stood up, thrown back from the 24-yard line on a head-on stick. As we remind you that next week, an NFL doubleheader coming up. In the first game, many of you will see the Browns go against the Oilers at Houston. Others will see the Oakland Raiders against their arch rivals, the Chiefs, at Kansas City. In the 4 o'clock game, Jacksonville will be playing the Jets in the Meadowlands of New Jersey. Many of you will see that. Also, on the 4 o'clock games in other parts of the country, Cincinnati will go against Seattle. And New England will play San Francisco. Last year in his first start, that Jeff Blake quarterbacked the Bengals to a win at Seattle. Now he throws a screen pass to the enemy. He has a first down and more as the... The Jaguars were playing run Beasley, and they came at him with a screen pass. That's not a good start to what is a key series for the Jaguar defense. Coach Coughlin talked about a situation like this last week in the Houston game where he had hoped this defense would get the ball back quickly in a couple of plays. Now, they certainly still have an opportunity to do that for the coach, but not a good start. That was a good play.
opened up to the enemy. And a big day for the Bengals. He drives it straight ahead on first down. Harry Colin, strong safety, got him. But it's another substantial gain, and the clock runs down to 6.15 to play. Watch the blocking of uh, Brooks and Broomfield there. The left guard and tackle, just a wide open hole. No moves. Eric just ran straight and gained a bunch of yards. He got six, almost seven. This time they're looking for number 21, and they get him for a loss on the play back to the 44-yard line. Jeff Lagerman, who had such a spectacular game a week ago, right uh, end for the Jaguars. He's been well played today by Kevin Sargent for the most part. And that is a matchup that was a cause for concern. A lot of concern. They were all raving about coaches on both sides, both teams, about the play of Lagerman last week. And he'll be pumped next week to go against his old team, the Jets. He said he went out of there when he felt they unfairly fired the coach last year, Pete Carroll, who's now the defensive coordinator for the 49ers. And off to the enemy on third down. He doesn't get there, and so the Jaguars are about to get the ball back with still a lot of time left. Five minutes to play. Jacksonville trailing Cincinnati by seven. That was a gutsy defensive call. Dave Shula's team very lucky there because that was a full out blitz. Both safeties came. Luckily for Jacksonville, it was a run, so every hole was plugged. Lee Johnson ready to punt, and there's Desmond Howard. He's back deep for the Jaguars. The left-footed punter, a former pro bowler, booms the ball down, forcing Howard into a fair catch at the 19-yard line. So the Jaguars have the long field to go, but they have time to do it. 418 to play as the NFL and NBC continues. On the line on this drive, Jaguars down by seven. Mark Purnell, their backup in at quarterback. 4.18 to play. Hand off to Jordan. And he's taken down at the 23-yard line. There's action in between the Colts and the Jets. For more on that, let's go back to Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Don, they're in the final minute of play at the Meadowlands. The Colts have come all the way back from a 24-3 second half deficit. Jim Harbaugh, two touchdown passes, that one 15 yards to Marshall Falk. Time winding down. Jets have the ball. It's a tie game, Don. Right now, the Jaguars are trying to tie the game here. They need a touchdown to do it. Here's a throw and a catch out to the third. No, a drop. It would have been a tremendous play by Cedric Tillman. The ball came in low. Coach Coughlin shaking his head. That would have been the catch of the day, though. I guess Pickens has to be the catch of the day. Yes. This, there's no reason for this ball to be low, though. There's no reason. That ball should have been thrown a little bit better. That should be a completion. From Coach Coughlin's angle, he thought it was a catch. And he had the right angle from where he's standing. Third down now. The crowd kicks in. Jaguars 5 of 14 on third down conversion. There's the rush. Throwing a catch. Desmond Howard is clotheslined by the middle linebacker, Steve Tovar. Well, and the spot may, that looks like they might have the first down. They do. Well, I was about to say, so close, he would almost have to go for it. Looked like he was knocked down short of it. But it's the forward progress. They go to the pressure. This time, it's such a quick pass that the defenders don't get a chance to interrupt Mark's opportunity to throw the ball. That was a big completion. It was huge. It keeps the drive alive. As time becoming a factor now inside of three minutes to play. Grinnell gets some time, releases the ball, and makes the completion. It is a completed pass out to the 42-yard line. Beautifully done. Desmond Howard leaning out at the ball, keeping both feet in. Well, 
Jacksonville is on the money now. Watch this. Both feet down, stretching, dragging the toe. Desmond Howard is beautiful there. But even prettier in my mind is the decision to roll Mark Brunel out of the pocket. Standing in that pocket, he's been nearly murdered. Yes, he has. He's much more effective rolling out. In fact, when he rolled out and kept it a little bit ago, he scored the touchdown. To the run, hard yards they are, and these backs all being counseled to put two arms on the ball. Randy Jordan, first-year player from North Carolina, does that. He got a couple of yards out to the 45-yard line before James Francis, a standout outside linebacker, got him. Don, three or four plays in the course of a football game make the whole event happen. We're all talking about that. They, Kazerski said our 3-13 and 13 season last year was a case of two or three missed plays in those 13 losses. We, here's a sack by James Francis. Sixth sack of this game for the Bengal defense. There's number 50, James Francis, untouched. Untouched. See, that is a blocking scheme problem. Yes, it was. They were double teaming <laughs> Big Daddy, and Francis just came around him untouched. That's one of those plays that I was talking about. Here's another one. Third down and 17 coming up. As we're down to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go. Coach Coughlin and his Jaguars up against it. What do you go to here? Third down and 17. Back on your 35, and you need a touchdown on this drive with two minutes to go. I don't know what play you have in your playbook that's designed for third and 17. Other than... Brunel busting out of the pocket and doing it on his own. On that last play, I believe that Mark held the ball too long. A three-step drop, the ball is supposed to be out of there. When he held it, that allowed Francis the time to get there. Three wide receivers set. Desmond Howard at the lower portion of your screen. Here comes the rush. Brunel stands in, makes the throw, and a catch by Desmond Howard. What a play. He hung in the air, and Grinnell was right on his numbers down to the 44-yard line. So on third and 17, the game is a big one, a gain of 23. And look how the pocket is collapsing around Mark Brunel. That's a great job by the quarterback and an even better job by Desmond Howard jumping up to make the catch. Desmond Howard's biggest play so far is a Jaguar, and the drive stays alive. Hand off. Down inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Ricardo McDonald makes the stop, but Beasley field goals don't help now with 119 to go, down by seven. I got to go back to Mark Brunel on that last throw. You've got, if you're in Jacksonville, you got to be standing up and applauding. They nearly killed him the second he released the ball. He stands in again, makes another throw, another catch. Penalty marker is down in the backfield of the Bengals. As on second down and five, it's close to a first down, but... The penalty benefits at this point the Jaguars because it stops the clock and it looks to be against Cincinnati. At the end of this game, we'll be switching to the Jets and the Colts who are 24-24 in overtime, but there's no guarantees this will not go to overtime. Illegal formation. Less than seven men on the line of scrimmage offense. Five yards. Tough call. Still second down. That's a tough call. A tough mistake at this time in the game. But it did stop the clock. The completed pass over the middle. Clock would have kept running. There's a minute to play. Ninth play of the drive. Second down and 10 for the Jaguars, who trail Cincinnati by seven with 60 seconds to play. Brunel, it's the connection, but the tackle is made well in bounds. The tackle of Cedric Tillman by James Francis. As the Jaguars look to go into alignment, now they call a timeout with 49 seconds to play. The NFL on NBC is going to be exciting till the final gun here at Cincinnati. 
Rennell trots out as there's timeout on the field with 50 seconds to go. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Tommy Roy. Coordinating producer of NFL football, John Ferretzis. Today's game was produced by Kevin Smolin, directed by Dick Klein. Associate director, Carol Larson. Production associate, Debbie Bulak. But we're now down to third down. Third down and seven. 50 seconds to go. Here comes the rush. Brunel stands in. He's on the run, and Brunel looks for a place to go. And he did not get the first down, and it'll be fourth down. He does get out of bounds, though, with 40 seconds left. Now the clock continues to run. They ruled he was down inbounds. Well, James Francis threw him down. He bounced out of bounds, but he was ruled down inbounds. It was a two-play situation. They're definitely going to go for it on fourth, even before they ran the third down. Fourth down for the Jaguars. Brunel stands in. He looks. He runs. It's over. The Bengals will win the game. Big Danny Wilkinson with his second sack of the game. Ends the game. And that is the seventh team sack for Cincinnati. So again, as they did in the opening game a week ago, the Jaguars fight to the end. Not quite enough. And David Shula... Proud of a 2-0 start, his team having just run out 11 seconds. What an exciting finish. What an exciting finish. Tom Coughlin so disappointed, but he, when he has time to sit down and look at this film, Don, like you said, he will remember that his team fought to the very end. Mistake after mistake. Good play, then bad play. And every week they'll do that. And in four years or less, there'll be a playoff team. Watch. And that'll do it. Uh, Bengals get off to a 2-0 start. Don Cricky for Beasley Reese. And now to Tom Hammond and Bob.